Oh, hey, everybody. What's going on? Glenn Monroe here. Uh, well, as you can see, I've got a little project going on. Here's some, uh, some of the strands of the inside of uh, the paracord that we got the other day, remember? We had the uh, paracord that I was actually trying to roll up in Hanks and uh, unravel from the mess that is, you know, supposedly what the military uh, depot guys can't figure out how to unravel. But, uh, Anyhow, I got this, uh, this Marine Corps pack that was uh, given to me, and as you can tell, it's got some, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got some damage right here, and uh, I have some of this uh, sport and outdoor contact adhesive and sealant, and this cordage right here, the paracord, is almost large enough to use for tufting, we call it tufting twine, kind of like the same thing as this, which I got at a upholstery place for 50 cents for a thousand feet or just 350 yards but it's a little large and won't fit in my uh, my stitching all and in the end this is a sewing all by the way and uh, yes it has a spool in it as you can tell see the swines in here and it's waxed cotton thread or whatever they seem to be using these days but uh, I'm going to try to do a little bit of a repair on this because it's brand new. It's brand new. Uh, what happened is I guess they used it maybe one time or it got damaged in, somehow and maybe they can't sell these so they pretty much uh, they cut them up like I said and they throw them in the dumpster. So this one was like I said salvaged or given to me and I have some pretty good adhesive so I'm going to uh, attempt the best of my ability, repair this with this very uh, high contact bond adhesive so we can get somewhere maybe, you know, stitch it together too. If I can get this to hold, you know, in a decent manner. And I already did this on my bivy bag and it worked out really well, so. which well, I got kind of in a similar way. So I figured if I just booger this up, best to my ability, I can get this to seal on itself, and then uh, stitch it together you know, after it dries, I think we can have a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent bag here. I got an old one. And I used it all last winter, and uh, it's old, if you catch my drift. And this is a brand new one. I was like, well, yeah, that'll be great. But uh, I've used this on some other items, and it seems to work pretty good, except when you have to use it all in one shot and try to not let it dry out. But this is a, a Loctite Amazing Goop from Loctite, which is, uh, I guess, in the, some kind of adhesive brand. But uh, yeah, I use this on my other gear and it works really well. The problem is, a lot of times I don't have a pin or some clamps to put this together with. So we have to kind of let it air dry. Then we just have to smash it together and see if we can get it to hold. But if we can get it to hold, you know, that's a little bit further along than we were before. And then we'll just stitch it together once it starts to set up. And then we can uh, stitch it once it holds together. And this will give us a little bit more of an edge on uh, this working. Oh yeah, that seems great. <laughs> so we'll work this side one at a time. But yeah, I was going to use the paracord, but I can't quite seem to get it inside the uh, sewing all. And this is one of the recommended items that you carry around in your, uh, you know, your kit, which is a, a sewing all. So, and I got this set up here at Hobby Lobby, and I thought it was from Sellrite. It works okay. I've sewn some bags together and repaired some other gear and clothing and shoes and whatnot. I mean, and you can make sales and other canvas gear out of this but you have to have a pretty good amount of stitching 
uh, thread, but I haven't really. I tried to put the paracord in here. It just doesn't seem to want to fit in there. I mean, it'll probably work once you figure out how to get it through here and spool it up, and you could probably use it. But that's the inside. That's one of the strands of the inside of the paracord. So while we're waiting around doing this, trying to get this to set up. And I don't have any clamps or anything to get this to permanently set up here. So the glue is pretty durable. It works well. problem is to get it to sit right. Squeeze it all together, you know. Yeah, if you can get this stuff to hold up. I don't want to get it on my sewing off, so I figured I'd just start off initially on some of the harder parts that are damaged. And then we'll just take it from there. See this piece right here? And we'll sew this back together. And that's probably going to be a pain in the butt. But once we fix it, it'll be worth it because my other pack has uh, worked out well and it just had a little boogered part up on the top. Mm. And I sewed that together. But that's at the top and that's some place you can get to. This one right here seems to be kind of a difficult access point. So. Once this cures, it holds up pretty good. The whole problem is to you know make sure this is setting up correctly. And that you have plenty on, not really plenty, but enough on here to create a good bond. This is one of them spots that seems to be like it's going to be quite the uh, pressure point, especially if you're carrying a 55 pound bag. I hope you're not carrying that much weight, but I know it's going to end up weighing you know, a good 30, 40 pounds. You got gear and some other stuff. Put the uh, adhesive on here and just kind of try to pull it taut, let it get some air to it. And it dries pretty fast, so I don't think you have to really worry about the bonding time too well. Just, just have to check on it. You had a way to vice this together, but if you're like me, you don't have all that stuff handy. You just have to use your good old muscles. I think people still use those, don't they? But if you have some pretty good contact, like I said, this is sport and outdoor uh, equipment, adhesive and sealant. And I've used it on some other items, so if you're not good at stitching and sewing or if it's in a pinch because you can't get to that that you know hard to reach area here. I recommend just at least trying to glue it up first with this uh, textile glue. Like I said, it's for sport equipment. And once it dries, it's on there. It's not going anywhere. So make sure you do this correctly the first time. And make sure it's where you want it, because once it dries, it's on there. It's not like super glue or anything. It's, it isn't just dry, you have to let it form a bond and then it turns into plastic. So hopefully maybe that will give you some ideas on uh, you have access to repairing your gear and you don't have you know a lot of funding or access to anything and you see uh, like I said I got this from Army Depot place they just get all this stuff by lot, it's already paid for. 
you know, we've, you know, financed a lot of this equipment. And then what they do now is everybody's coming home. So what the guys are doing is they're gambling for it, basically online or eBay or whatever, or by distributor or whatever. And a lot of this stuff has already been paid for. It's already been financed. It's uh, legitimate. It might be old, you know, from a, maybe a previous 10 year, 15 years ago or whatever, but it's paid for. It belongs to us. And they're just going to charge you for it when you go down there to get it. And I'm like, hey, man, I already paid for that. I think you should just hand it over. And they don't want to. They want you to pay them. I'm like, you already get benefits. You already get all that stuff. What are you going to do with 50 backpacks? They want to sell them. I was like, why? You've already, you know. It's already been financed. It's already been paid for. It's debt free. They don't think that. They think they uh, can use it for collateral to get uh, equity to get whatever they want. So that's my take on it, but you, know, you don't have to take my word for it. Anyhow, I'll just keep working this until actually it starts to form a bond. That's what I've noticed. And then, once it gets like that, you know, while it's still wet, I don't think it's a good idea to stitch this while it's wet. It might mess this up. But after it dries, then we're going to go in through here and run us a stitch line. And then I'll show you how to do that. But the initial setup of this is pretty simple. Usually when you're done, or you're storing this, you take the threading out. See, and it has a spool inside of there, which is pretty cool. So, I mean, the, the threading's already stored in your basically your sewing all and then what you want to do is you want to wrap that around one time and then that's where your finger goes see and then you can control the actual tension on it as you're stitching and then however long plus a little extra because you're going to have to lock this together this is a locking deal when you actually come in and out you're going to lock these uh, stitches together so and as you can see this uh, needle right here has got a groove in it the sewing on this awl needle and it has a, a small cutout right here as well so when you pull this wax thread through and like I said they uh, the Hobby Lobby here sells they still sell the thread some of them don't you'll be hard-pressed to even find this but at this one here they had uh, they actually had the individual replacement needles and they had bulk uh, threading but it was ten bucks and like I said I down this at a thrift store and I figured hey 50 cents and it's almost the same size I could probably if I did some finagling I could get it in there but this is upholstery twine it's tufting twine so that's a little bit different situation that's probably like for leather working and whatever and upholstery but this is a little bit smaller and it seems to work so that's what I'm going to do after this dries and sets up but I figured I'd at least start on it and give y'all guys and goyles out there in uh, the other parts of the world, maybe down the street, some uh, some inspiration or a little uh, direction on how to repair your gear, especially if it's, you know, this is going to carry some weight. I'm going to be wanting to use it for quite a while, so I want it to hold up well. So as soon as this dries and forms a really good bond, I would leave myself some room at least to run a couple of stitch lines through here and then we're going to have to then we're going to have to deal with this once all this dries so what I'm probably going to have to do is the same thing but we're going to do it this way so I can run a line a stitch line through because I can't see inside the bag that's the downside of actually trying to do this you have to be able to see whatever you're stitching through the other side so you can pull this line through the actual loop because you're going to lock it together. You're going to pull one through and then you're going to stitch. You're going to pull the loop through. And so we'll end up gluing this too once all this sets up this way. Hopefully by then I can find something. I wanted to do it the other direction but I don't think I'm, uh, I'm going to be able to pull that off. Like tuck this underneath somehow like this. You know, and glue it together because I won't be able to pull the thread through. 
So we're going to end up having to do it this way. So that's why I want to use the glue so at least we'll have some water resistant capabilities. Even though the net's down here, there's like a vent down here or something. But uh, I want to at least be able to stitch this through so I can pull the lock, you know, the locking part through the other side. So while we're doing this, I figured I'd just do a little video on prepping and uh, explaining the stitching all. This is made by a... Uh, ow. This one here, if I remember right, they're sail right, which is actually, in my opinion, a better one. They use that for making sails and things like that. And then you have this one here, which is just says basic, your standard made in America sewing all, uh, commonly distributed at, uh, well, Hobby Lobby. And that's where I prefer to go and get all, like, you know, my, uh, well, they have a lot of cool stuff in there. Upholstery, textiles, different kinds of glues and things like that, leather working type situations, but it's kind of a, out of my range of finance. So, But as we uh, go over this, I'll even explain, you know, we'll go over the pack. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is a, this is a brand new one. Brand spanking new. There wasn't nothing wrong with it other than this had a rip in it. And I'm wondering why they did that because it was cut. See, when they can't, they don't want to deal with this stuff or it gets damaged slightly, the guys will go ahead and finish cutting it up and they'll throw it in the dumpster. So they throw away thousands and thousands of dollars a week away in decent equipment. And I think it's pretty disappointing considering, you know, we have a lot of responders, uh, people that can use this for work. You know, this is work, re this is work gear, you know. Rangers, medical people, we're talking about domestic services. I'm not talking about, you know, wartime. We're talking about domestic. You know, right in your own backyard, you can use this gear for all kinds of great stuff. And, uh, I think it's a... I think it's... Well, I think it's horrible, the fact that they just throw all this stuff away. And uh, there's people that need it every day to accomplish a job. Probably better than what they could have done if they had been properly geared. been thousands and thousands of dollars in time and effort trying to acquire the gear instead of doing the job that you know the gear was designed to do so if I see any of this stuff what I do is I acquire it I try to fix it I repair it and try to put it back together basically like a haberdasher I guess this would be a haberdasher item like you know I guess that's why they call them haversacks you know the little bags or messenger bags with all the little goodies and you know sharpening knives and sewing equipment sewing gear and you know just basic you know helpful stuff like a little helper type of stuff so anyways you notice the glue's setting up pretty good I mean this is setting pretty fast I just don't feel comfortable with, uh, sewing through it and stitching through it because I could possibly you know end up gumming this up and damaging it I won't be able to use this needle very well so I'm going to have to wait on that but I thought I'd at least show an example of you know what kind of gear I use when I do my repairs or if I'm trying to actually make something that's going to be applicable to what I need to do and uh, I, I've used this several times you know for emergency purposes and just actually sewing up some basic clothing items shoes you name it backpacks, saddlebags for my uh, bicycle, which I don't have any video footage of because all that stuff was actually ended up becoming, uh, well, we'll just say commandeered by somebody else. But as we're doing this, we'll just wait on the bond to form. See, as you can tell, it's it's kind of silicone-y, but it ends up turning into this uh, really hard plastic type material. So I just keep trying to smush it together and get it to, uh, you know, basically permeate these little, uh, you know, these pores inside of this textile material that they make this out of. I don't know the name of it, so you just have to bear with me on that. But just keep squeezing it together, and once it forms a good bond, try to get all the cracks and stuff and get this to... Uh, permeate the other parts of this item. 
Because once this stuff dries, it's gonna it's gonna harden like plastic. So. That's why I try to see if it's gonna hold up. I put some more in here. If I get sloppy, it'll, like I said, you can just cut it off or it'll probably end up breaking off. But if you can get it to permeate together with the other pieces, though, you've done a good job. Because once this stuff dries, it's on. So if you can see, I put some more on there because it wasn't holding well right here. This end right here wasn't doing too good. You get a little bit on you, and it'll just wipe off. So for now, <clears throat> just try to uh, get this to all seam together, clean off any excess. I mean, it might look a little messy, but once it dries, it ain't gonna be no big deal. If you can get this to, it looks like it's gonna hold up pretty good. If you can get this seam. But it's waterproof and it does, once it does set up, it's, it's on. So, I think I paid, what did I get for this? I think I paid three, four dollars for this. There's a lot in here. I don't think you're going to use the whole amount. I would recommend getting it in a smaller little, a smaller little tube at a time. Because if you get all this, there's more than likely you're not going to be able to use it all at one shot. It'll probably go bad before you use all this. That's quite a bit. But if you do like bags and backpacks and little sacks and satchels or you need a pair of your shoes this works pretty good for that so just in case let you know the amazing goop and then after we get done you know letting this dry and sewing this all up we're going to test this out because I usually carry about 45 to 50 pounds you know under severe circumstances of course in my other one my old one and uh, and I got some different gears gear type stuff I'm changing up this year so so I'll probably be somewhere else in the United States instead of in extreme cold weather. But yeah, once this dries, just set it up like this. If it does hold up well, all I'm going to do is run a stitch through here, and then we'll work on the other side. See, like I said, because they apparently they cut that, or I mean, I could probably stick this over on top of each other. At this point, you know, or flip this around once it dries, and try to run a stitch this way as I glue this in here. So, but we're just going to have to wait till this dries and see what we can do with it. Anyhow, there's a my little five-minute, ten-minute little tidbit on maybe something you can do to straighten out your situation. And don't be afraid to put at least, you know, about that much down through there. And then try to line the ends up and see how I got the ends lined up. And just squeeze them together to get it to form a good bond. And then we'll deal with the next portion after this sets up, which is probably going to be in the morning or tomorrow. So I'll film another one, but if you got a little bit of time to let this set up, that would be what uh, my recommendation. Yeah, <clears throat> but I wanted to go over what the uh, paracord looks like, and uh, like I said, the ability to possibly use this as a threading material. So you just burn the end. Try to get the get smaller so you can thread. See now you got the end controlled, and you could possibly let's see. Yeah, it'll it'll slide through there. If you have a sewing all, that'll probably fit through there. It might be a pain in the butt because it's a little bit bigger than the recommended size of the twine. So that's what uh, that's what we're dealing with. A lot of people have never seen the inside of this stuff, and they don't know that hey, I can actually use this for sewing 
Well, yeah. And probably a bunch of other things too. But. Anyway. So we're going to let this dry. And I thought I'd just show you kind of how I makeshift repair things. But if you don't have this out in the field, of course not. You know, I always recommend at least having a small tube of this because it, it does work well. It just takes a while to set up. But once it sets up, it seems to hold up under a lot of pressure. So if you put a generous amount on here correctly, you know, with no gaps and you have a good contact surface, I'm sure this will just this will do just fine for what we're going to do with it. You know, if you need to repair some gear or whatever else. I mean, I haven't tried this out on a lot of things, but so far it seems to work well on textiles and canvas material. But if you really want it to hold up well, I recommend running another uh, stitch seam through here. And we're going to do that, like I said, as soon as this sets up. We'll, uh, we'll run some line through here, and I'll set my camera up a little bit better so, you know, so folks out there who may not know how to use a stitching awl or a sewing awl, or basically just an old school needle and some thread for that matter, I didn't know how to do it until I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> I had to fix something. Anyhow, for now, I thought I'd just hook y'all up. So I'll talk to y'all later. Take it easy.